Uh, welcome, all of you, uh, to the Grigoma Gallery and the National Library of Wales. My name is Andrew Green, and I'm the librarian of the library. And this is a double celebration of two of Wales's outstanding contemporary artists. The American critic, Logan Pearsall Smith, once said, how often my soul visits the National Gallery and how seldom I go there myself. <laughs> uh, but it's good to see there are so many of you here today in body and soul. Um, now, it's rare for this gallery uh, to be devoted, more than this gallery, in fact, in this on this occasion, to be devoted to the work of one single contemporary artist. This exhibition, which looks back, of course, over an artistic uh, career, um, a whole career to, to date, uh, has been many years in the making. It differs from most conventional retrospectives at, say, 60, in that Clive has only been, as many of you know, a painter proper since the 1990s, after a series of previous careers all connected with the parallel world of the theatre. Why such a big show? Well, quite simply, because in the view of many, Clive Hicks Jenkins is one of the outstanding figurative painters at work in Wales today. In fact, figurative artists. If you're not already familiar with his work, then you're going to be out astounded by what you see here. By the swiftness of Clive's artistic development over a very brief period, by the variety of media in which he works, paint, drawing, models, book illustrations, pottery, toy theatres, lots more. By the boldness and the particularity of his colours, the sureness of his composition, and particularly the potency of his subjects, which are drawn from so many different sources, his family, his places, mythology and literature. Now, at the poetry uh, book launch, um, we'll talk about the books in a few moments, which happened last night in the university, uh, Damien Walford Davis uh, likened Clive to a dark star, if I remember rightly, uh, drawing other creative people, indeed everybody, inevitably into his orbit. It was a striking comparison. I must say I've always seen you, Clive, as a blazing white star rather than a dark star, but whichever it is, uh, please welcome now, and I'm now referring maybe to uh, Clive's theatrical prehistory, the star of the show, Clive Hicks Jenkins. There are too many of you, too many faces from my past here for me to be entirely without emotion. I see my oldest friend, Robin, standing over there, Robin Hawkins. Robin was instrumental in giving me my first exhibition in a public gallery space at Newport Museum and Art Gallery um, back in 2001. Without Robin, it wouldn't have happened. We've known each other since we were 11. When we moved here to Aberystwyth, I felt as though I was leaving many of my friends behind me, my friends and my family. It was an adventure. Peter came here to be head of the Royal Commission for the Ancient and Historic Monuments of Wales, and I followed on his coattails because I'm a painter and I can work anywhere. But we have made such friends here. We have felt so welcome. I never want to leave. We live in Tiersa, just out in the Ustwith Valley, and it is the place where my heart rests. I may be here in person, but my heart is at Tiersa. The National Library of Wales have done the most extraordinary exhibition here. I think Andrew Green, who first came up with the idea that I might exhibit here, that was before we came up with the idea that it might be a 60th retrospective. The team here at the National Library of Wales are beyond praise. 
I thank Jamie Thomas, who um, was the curator of the exhibition and who worked with Peter and I on it, and never gainsayed us, never shook her head and said no, always tried to help us. Um, Andy was the technician in charge of the exhibition hang, but the entire team have been breathtaking in the way in which they've supported this exhibition. And what you see here today is not just my work, but the superlative job that they've done of displaying it. And they've come in on bank holidays and they've worked and labored hard into the nights. And I won't name you all, but you know that you have my heart for having done such a fantastic exhibition. I don't believe that my work will ever be seen to such advantage again in my lifetime. I think that when you do a retrospective and you look back over your life and you look at your work, it behoves you to remember where you came from and what you were before you arrived here on this podium. When I began as a painter, I tried to hide the fact that I had worked in the theatre. It's true. Um, I had run from the theatre after a successful career with which I'd just fallen out of love. And when I began painting, I began painting with no background in art. I began painting with no training in art. And I felt that if I was to make headway, then it wouldn't do for people to know that I once choreographed pantomimes and ballets and operas. But as I progressed, I realized that all of those things are instrumental in what I am today. And now I can live with those things, and indeed, I'm quite proud of them. <laughs> um, and I'm proud of the fact that today I see faces in the audience from my theatrical past. My director from when I was 15, Roger Knott, <laughs> who directed me in a production of Treasure Island with Cardiff Open Air Theatre is here. Uh, one of my fellow actors, Clive Roberts, is out there. I saw you, oh, there you are, Clive. Hello. We haven't seen each other in a very long time. <laughs> um, it is extraordinarily emotional to be here with all of these faces who have just come from so far away. Our friends from America who've come to read poetry and partake in the launch of the Book of Ustworth. I can't find the words, so don't expect me to say them. But there, there's one person who I must thank above everything, the person who gave me my career, the person who found me in the wilderness and pointed me in the right direction, and all of you will know that that is Peter Wakelin. I was a custodian at Tratau Court and Castle, sitting in a hut, um, selling tickets and cleaning toilets and rescuing bats when Peter and I met. My career was behind me. Um, I felt that what I was doing was just a way of making a living. And it was Peter who looked at some of my stage designs and said, do you know you draw a bit better than most stage designers? And that um, I think that maybe you might have another trick up your sleeve. Well, I've spent the last 20 years trying to prove him right. I've spent the last 20 years trying to make him proud of me. And I spent the last 20 years fulfilling the thing that in my heart, I think perhaps I should have been doing from when I was a teenager, which is to paint and make art. I thank you all for coming so far, those of you who've come from far, those of you who've come from just down the road. I thank all of my friends here who've made our home in Aberystwyth a true home. I thank Pip Koppel, who I love, as though she were my own mother. I thank Anne and Basil Wolfe, who feed me cake and bring me things when I'm in the studio and too busy to be able to feed myself. I think I thank David and Clarissa Lewis who took us to their hearts and took us into their home. Being a painter isn't just about standing in the studio and making still lives and landscapes and narrative paintings. It's about the people you surround yourself with, the people who cluster around you, the people who you love. And I see too many faces in this audience tonight to be able to tell you exactly how many there are that I love, but there are a huge number of you there, and I'm so grateful that you came. Thank you so much.